you might notice that the box office is in a pretty bad place right now. So many movies have bombed this year and even still so many movies just are not reaching the money-making heights that they used to. The highest grossing movie this year was Dune Part 2 in the $700 million range and that stands above so much else. Godzilla x Kong, $600 million, uh, Planet of the Apes, $300 million range and those are at the very top of the list. There is not a lot that's making money right now. There's not a lot that people really want to see. There's not a lot that's really causing a lot of conversation. And with this, there have been so much discussion about exactly what is wrong with the box office. Are movie theaters going to die? Are movie theaters just becoming obsolete if they haven't already? And I've heard so many excuses for why that is. I've heard COVID. I've heard economy. People don't have the money that they used to. And ticket prices have soared. I've heard it's because of streaming. I've heard it's because of TikTok. I've heard it's because of YouTube. I've heard it's because younger generations have cropped up and just don't appreciate movie theaters. They just don't see the need to see it in theaters. They just consume their entertainment differently. I've heard it's because theaters are dirty. I've heard so many excuses for why movie theaters are dying, why the movie industry is suffering, and why people don't seem like they're gravitating towards new movies like they used to. But I would like to shove away all of those reasons and shove away all the people who are saying that it's a complicated situation with a lot of moving factors. Actually, it's not. There is a very simple reason why movies at the theater are not selling this year. There's a reason why things were struggling last year and it's a very simple answer but it's one that a lot of people perhaps do not want to hear because it's one that does not come with a necessarily obvious solution but here it is the reason why the reason why justin the reason why people aren't going to see movies at the theater is you're not creating movies that the mainstream public wants to see <laughs> That seems like a very simple answer, but one that maybe is ambiguous as to what to do with that. And instantly I can hear all the people in the comments saying, what are you talking about? There are movies of quality that get made today all the time, like uh, Tar and um, uh, Furiosa. Those movies have nothing in common apart from the fact that film Twitter loves them. But those movies did not make a lot at the box office, did they? There will be endless amounts of movies that film students and cinephiles claim are the best thing that they've ever seen, and that, of course, since these movies are such high quality, then that is also evidence that people just don't want to go to the theater anymore. Yet, when we look at the audience scores from the few people who saw Furiosa, it got a B. So, as much as film students adore that film, apparently it just did not reach the masses that well. And honestly, neither did Planet of the Apes look at that score for that movie. Which is what I really want to get into in this video, because there has been a problem with movies in general for many years now, and it's something that that maybe is harder to pinpoint, but I'm going to try. I have noticed it for years now that movies are not of the level that they used to be. And I'm not talking about the art films and things out there. There is a difference between being a movie that is very artfully well made and a movie that is entertaining to the masses. Once again, you're not going to have a big billion dollar family hit on a movie like Tar. We should separate those films, okay? But here's the thing. When I got into being a filmmaker, I wanted to go back and make sure that I watched all the classic films that I could. And you'd be surprised at how many very classic, iconic films I hadn't seen at that point. And so I had the privilege of going back through decades of filmmaking and just seeing all these movies that used to appeal to the masses and have still stood the test of time today. I saw Back to the Future. I saw Goonies. I saw Alien. I saw Legally Blonde. I saw Clueless. I saw 10 Things I Hate About You. I saw Terminator. I saw Halloween. I dove into the filmography of Steven Spielberg like I hadn't before. And I noticed something about all these films that I watched. I said, wow. These films are a whole lot better than anything that I see today. And I know what you're gonna say, I'm looking at the past through rose-tinted glasses, but remember, I didn't grow up in any of the time that these films came out. I'm just noticing that they're so much better than what I see today. And you might also say, but there were so many horrible movies released in the past that didn't work, that bombed, that have been forgotten, and you're just looking at all of these ones because you have decades worth of it and that you can put them all together now. And yes, that's true. 
But here's the problem. It's not just that I'm looking in retrospective and seeing all these great movies that were made in the past. I'm looking at them and saying, these kinds of movies would never get made today. And uh, maybe I should just explain exactly what is different between the movies that used to get made and the movies now. Maybe Planet of the Apes is the place to start. Now, I had seen Planet of the Apes, the original ones, uh, made in the late 60s to the 70s, all the way back when I was like eight years old. And I recently saw the new one in the theater. And when I saw the Planet of the Apes, the first movie, uh, when I was eight years old, I actually really, really enjoyed it. It was a very highbrow film and I actually got a lot of it when I was younger. It's a movie that very, very specifically sets up a character, a protagonist who is very cynical on the world. He is an astronaut. He is thrust off on a mission to find other life in space. They crash land on a planet that they find out is uh, populated by anthropomorphic apes. And essentially, the entire movie is about has themes like animal cruelty and racism, but it's ultimately about the nature of humankind. But it's very exciting and very action-oriented and a lot of peril in it at the same time. Time. And as a little kid, I really, really enjoyed it. And the Planet of the Apes films, the original ones, were actually hugely successful among families when they first came out, believe it or not. Then I went to the new one recently, and I was bored to tears. I wanted to leave the theater. I couldn't wait until the movie was done. And whenever I have an experience with a movie, I always try to ask myself questions of why I had that experience. But I suppose my experience with the initial Planet of the Apes was because it initially had a character that I at least understood if I didn't have a lot to, to relate to him, but I understood what he was all about and I was interested to follow him on this journey because his cynical worldview was directly coming, being confronted with a very cynical fate for the world as the Planet of the Apes came from. So it was basically a character who was seeking to find something good in the universe better than humans, but he gets confronted with the worst thing possible. That kind of confirms the worst of his cynicism. So it was an interesting, very well-developed character that really drew you into this universe and the supporting cast was all very well drawn and interesting and it was very very layered in how it was written you could tell that the planet of the apes script the initial one was one that was rewritten a lot so that they could add more and more in and make it all cohesive and make it interesting but the latest movie i didn't really have anything to glean on i thought that the characters were all really simplistic i didn't think that there was a whole lot to them i didn't want to really spend time with them i thought that the plot didn't really have a lot to it and so i I just wasn't really invested in anything and I thought that the action was really really generic by comparison. I just didn't care about anything and unfortunately that has been my experience with most movies that get released these days. I don't care about anything. I don't find anything interesting. It's all very meh. But I've had better experiences, say, going to see Lord of the Rings at the theater again, as was released recently. And I'm just amazed at the care that is put into those movies in terms of the world building and the characters. And I think, sadly, you just wouldn't see anything like that made today. When I think of modern day movies, all of it just feels so corporate, sanitized, uncreative. Like, on a technical level, they get everything right. They get the best lighting crews, the best cinematographers, everything, so that it, the best actors, so that it looks amazing, so that you have actors who can sell emotions, but then the storylines and the characters themselves just usually do not have that much substance. Nothing really draws me in, nothing's really exciting. There's not really much of a thrill anymore of anything. It feels like, with the exception of some indie horror films, that every horror film I see being advertised to me is the same. It's like movies almost lack their soul in large part these days. Even a movie like Dune Part 2, and I could have told you at the beginning of the year, yeah, that is gonna sell at the box office because it's an adaptation of a very famous book and it looks good and it was good. However, even a movie like that, I would probably revisit it for the cinematography, but in terms of really connecting with the characters, I don't really think so. I saw it several times in the theater, but since then I've not really felt the desire to go back and see it again. There hasn't been much out there to really spark up the mainstream public, I don't think, in a long time, or should I say since Barbenheimer. Because Barbie, regardless of what you think of the final movie, 
actually did wonders in its marketing. They were doing a different kind of movie. It was going to be based on a children's toy, but it was supposed to be more highbrow than that. So that created this really big ambiguity around the movie about what was it actually going to be about? What was the mystery box behind it? Where were the characters actually going to go? And the marketing, despite blowing up as this big pink party, actually did very well at hiding the actual story. And so that mystique around it really hyped people up and made people want to go see it. It made people want to wear pink to see it, make it an event, put on cupcake parties for everyone, you know, for everyone saying that we can't afford, we are so destitute, we can't afford movie tickets. For some reason, we could when Barbie was coming out, and for some reason, people can when Deadpool and Wolverine is coming out. And that's the thing that's kind of funny to me, is when we people talk about Deadpool and Wolverine, it's like they've already decided that the movie is going to be good. The movie industry is so desperate for a big hit right now that it's like they've already decided that the movie's good because it's making a lot of money. It, like, we don't even know what we've seen it yet. I'll tell you why Deadpool and Wolverine is selling, though. It's what people actually want to see. Deadpool is a popular character. Wolverine is a popular character. Superhero team-ups and fights have always been popular amongst that crowd, so therefore it's going to make money regardless of its quality. It's what people want to see. People didn't want to see the Marvels. No one was asking for a third Ant-Man movie after those initial Ant-Man movies didn't make that much. People weren't asking for a Furiosa movie after the Mad Max saga, which started a long time ago, never made that much money in the first place. And there were already articles coming out when Furiosa was greenlit questioning if it was was really worthwhile to do a prequel nine years later. So maybe Furiosa is good, maybe it's not. It appears that there's a disconnect between the cinephiles who love it and the audience, given those B cinema scores. I just feel like what is good now, what is considered good for a movie now, a good movie now, would be mediocre by the original standards. And here's why I believe that is. I think that what that back in the day, 10 to 20 years ago, you used to have people who were working in the industry who were actually creative people and that those creative people were better at working with the business side of it. So that's how you get these very ambitious films. Not films, I mean, are going off the rails and trying to be uh, so, trying so hard to be different and unconventional that they become niche. No, I mean, films that were so ambitious that they really, really tried to be the most exciting thing, the most thrilling thing, the thing with characters that you would remember forever. I don't know that I'm seeing any of that kind of ambition in the mainstream anymore. And why would they? There are very few directors with agency these days. The Hollywood system just has not been working like that to really bring up those voices. Most directors are just tools for the studios to command them to do what they want and then bring it to life. And I think that that's why a lot of things seem very, very dead. But I'll tell you, there was a series of movies, it was the last one standing, that I thought did really strive to hit it out of the park and uh, make something really, really exciting that would really connect with the masses and try to do something even bigger. And you might get mad at me for saying this, but it was Marvel. I know what people are going to say now because Marvel has gone hill and Marvel is actually everything wrong with cinema. Actually... Marvel was like last man standing as in terms of the franchises that people really that really had a fan base and people really connected with. And yeah, they had bad movies. They also hit it out of the park several times. But with Marvel and Star Wars and Star Trek and Disney movies and all of that, they've all been run into the ground. These used to be the big IP films that um, uh, movie theaters and studios could really rely on that would always bring in a, a profit at the box office. But what happened during the 2010s? What did we just see? What what has all this discussion on YouTube been about? Well, we've seen a lot of negativity towards these franchises being destroyed and put down, and that's because they were. Star Trek's been run into the ground, Terminator murdering John Connor, Disney remakes, Wish, Lightyear, crushing the Disney animation machine. I've seen some people complain about all the negativity against movies on YouTube, but I'm thinking, but the reason why there's so much negativity about these movies is that people are unhappy with them. People are unhappy with where they're going. But there is evidence that people would go see the movies in theaters again if you just give them what they want. That's why we have these certain movies that come out that actually do make a profit because they're what people actually wanted to see. With the Wish movie that bombed at the box office, it once again bombed and it didn't do any better on streaming. But what I saw online is this big fan base that grew up over the original concept of Wish that was going to be a star boy that comes to Earth and tries to help Asha and they have a romance and there's an evil king and queen. People love that original concept, but the people at Disney steered away from that. They wanted the sanitized movie with no love interest, with no evil queen, and they suffered for it. I think with Star Wars, people wanted to see Luke, Han, and Leia 
all get together again with a similar tone to the other films, and they wanted to see them uh, fight the Empire again, but they didn't do that. They subverted, and they didn't have a plan going forward, so all that is crushed down. With Marvel movies, I think people honestly just wanted a cohesive story with characters they could root for, but no, uh, all the characters either died or were character assassinated, the movies didn't become cohesive, they weren't exciting anymore, and so people abandoned. But they will come back if they see something they like, like Deadpool and Wolverine. You know, you can point fingers and and blame all this stuff for people not going to theaters all you want. You can say COVID, even though people are going to concerts and restaurants uh, just as they were before. COVID isn't a factor unless we're talking about why people aren't going to theaters and trying to make excuses. You can say that it's for lack of money, except that people seem to have plenty of money when they actually see something they want to see. You can blame it on streaming, and even though you are in total control over the windows that you give to put things on streaming or not, you don't have to make people think that if they think a movie looks mid, then they can just wait for it on streaming so that there isn't a risk of going to see it at the theater. You can blame it on dirty theaters, except for you could make the same arguments about restaurants that no one has stopped going to. You could blame it on uh, younger people's attention spans being so short, except for we're watching watching like five hour video essays here on YouTube, our attention spans are not being destroyed by the internet. And just five years ago, I was in a packed theater in Avengers Endgame with kids. I saw the Russo brothers saying that the reason that movies aren't doing well at the theater anymore is because the next generation just doesn't watch things like that. Except for even in 2022, Marvel movies were still selling. There's not a generational gap here. If you saw the negativity around Love and Thunder and Doctor Strange 2 though, you might know, you might begin to understand why people people stopped going to see Marvel movies as regularly. And if only there would be some acknowledgement of this from the people behind the scenes, then maybe progress could be made. Maybe you could start asking questions of what do audiences wh who you are at the mercy of actually want to see. Maybe you should start questioning what marketing tactics you could use to reach people because, my goodness, you've been marketing movies the same way with the same inception horns, the same slowed down dramatic uh, pop songs, the same edits for the same way for so many Many years. The last 10 years were spent essentially with these people dismantling all the franchises that they used to rely on and not allowing mid-budget films to get into the theaters that used to sell. And now they're questioning why is no one going to the theater? We see what people want through films like Anyone But You that actually managed to pick up some money at the box office. And I knew that it was going to do well when it came out, even if it wasn't a blockbuster on its first weekend, because I'm like, this is like the classic uh, Shakespeare termed modern day rom-com that people used to enjoy and, and that that I will say a lot of girls want to go see. But there haven't been any of those. They haven't really produced many of them. At least not for the theaters. Hollywood is out of touch. That is their problem. They're not connected with what people are feeling right now. They're not connected with what people want to see now. And sometimes even when it seems like they know that, they just steer clear in the other direction. You can make movies that are both creative and that people also want to see, but it doesn't seem that they're doing either of that right now and I want I'm and I'm starting to wonder if these people hate their own industry that they work in because if you're throwing up your hands and being shocked that Furiosa and Garfield were not billion dollar hits at the box office well, that tells me that you either want to quit or you're even more out of touch than I thought. I could have told anyone at the beginning of the year, the only movies that are coming out this year that could be big hits, and even those are questionable, are Dune 2, Deadpool and Wolverine, and possibly, possibly Joker 2. And that's how it's shaking out. So why is it a shock that no other movies other than those are doing well at the box office? People who work in the movie industry need to get in touch. They need to start opening the doors up again for people to actually be be creative and actually try to connect with an audience. They need to open the doors up for mid-budget films to come back, for films that the writers have actually put a lot of effort into their characters so that people actually care about them, films that are actually innovative and exciting and that there is incentive to go see them. Otherwise, what's really going to kill the industry is the fact that a bunch of clueless suits don't know how to sell movies and they don't seem to want to actually understand how to fix it. And that really depresses me because to me, like, are, there's plenty of artists out there there that could connect with people if they were just given the opportunity, but I'm not seeing any opportunities being given right now. Hollywood is becoming the same bubble of nepotism with the same people working on the same projects over and over again, and it's not connecting with people. And I 
feel that this is not going to be the last conversation we have about this. Sorry for this ramble, but I'm just getting really, really frustrated and why, how it's so obvious that the movies being released right now were not going to click with people. And it's so obvious that years of relying purely on franchises, not building up new things. I don't even think a movie like Iron Man would get made today, even to lead up to the MCU, because there's no really attempt out there to try something that's really going to capture the zeitgeist. Hollywood is essentially killing itself with its bad decisions and not doing anything that I can see right now to fix itself. And it's really sad to see what's happening with the movie industry after so many years, like the Disney Renaissance, the Star Wars films, the horror films of the 70s and 80s, the Hitchcock films, the Pirates of the Caribbean films, the rom-coms of the 90s and 2000s, all of those films just running a thriving industry and none of those kinds of films get made anymore because this industry just sees films as content now. They don't understand how to connect with people. You want to complain about YouTubers being able to connect with people? That's because they're in touch with their audience and they're willing to be. You need to get in touch. I could talk about this subject all day, but I've already talked a long time. Ah, thank you guys for watching this video. I'm really depressed of the, over the state of movies. I hope you understand what I'm getting for. I know this was a ramble. If you want to support me and support my filmmaking on my channel, you can check out my Patreon, as these patrons have already done. Thank you guys so much, as always, for supporting this channel, and I will see you guys in the next video.